beautiful blessed family <laughs> I feel like people are like where were you where have you been I know I am so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so sorry um I really felt a little overwhelmed by all the prophets that came out of the woodwork all of a sudden everyone seems to want to speak on what's happening right now and really we've been speaking about something happening for a while now I have never pre I've never spoken on a virus there's plagues on the globe there have been plagues been happening locusts and all kind of stuff but this virus um, isn't like I said it's not of our Heavenly Father and remember nothing can happen without his okay he's allowed this okay there is a sequence of events in the word that is still to come Okay, this is not over by any means. So when people are, ta are listening to the radio or to the news and anticipating what is to come, be very cautious of doing that because scripture indicates that this, we're living in a special time and that this is, if this is not in the order of things to come in the word, imagine how much more intense it's going to be. Now that, as I say that, please don't be afraid. <laughs> Please. Because I am not trying to be a part of this gang stalking thing that's happening with the media relations to kind of scare people. There's like telling you, don't be afraid. But, <laughs> I, mean, if, I mean, it's almost like, you know, someone pointing a gun to your head and said, don't be afraid. And th they are, you know, they have the gun cocked and they have a bag of bullets. Like, honestly. Um, so much I could say right now, but I just want to really just quickly check in. I did another video, but I'm not going to post it because I just want to do a quick check in. I want to be thorough with when I share what I'm going to share. Um, I will say this one thing. There was a press conference I watched with Donald Trump talking to the press. And they were asking where they thought the virus started from. And he said, China, China, China. Right? You know how he talks. Okay. Now, if you don't think that the Chinese government have not been watching what comes out of the U.S. press, you, you have to kind of in history know how politics works. And um, as much as they're trying to blame China, China's not going to take responsibility for this. They've already said that they believe that the virus was sent by the U.S. This is the talk. Now... I had mentioned when I did my first video in relation to the times we're living in, I talked about a war, okay? There are, there are people, like countries taking sides right now in relation to who's the cause of this and who's right, who's wrong. So let's be wary. This pandemic, what is not, is not, was not ordained by God, but he allowed it. He has allowed it, okay? Now, if you, as you can see, another thing I'm going to share. So I talked about the war that seems to be brewing under the, under the surface. Still waters run deep. So there's talk about it. There's rumblings about it. But I think what's going to happen is going to be a sudden thing. This is what I believe. Mm. Oh, the media is saying, like kind of poking fun at people buying toilet paper. I mean, they had... Basically, what they're trying to do is discourage people from preparing for a, a, a glitch in our supply chain. Now, they're saying that things are fine, they're going to come in. How in the world do we know this for sure? It, you know, if, if this virus is impacting the supply chain right now, in relation the, the, the system as we know it now, in relation to what can stay open, what cannot be open, people should be staying at home, schools are closed, blah, blah, blah. What's to say that this couldn't impact the supply chain? Remember, when one aspect of the supply chain is impacted, it's a domino effect. It impacts the other aspects of the supply chain. So, for example, when a store is getting their, their shipments in daily, I talked about this, stores get a shipment of stuff in daily. This is mostly the perishable things, fruits and vegetables, things, meat, things that can go bad. Now, because of the demand on other aspects of the supply chain, it's just, it's kind of sent some disruption into the whole supply chain. So when people are calling in the day before, like, we need more, you know, broccoli, this, 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 that, um, they're going to have to, on a daily basis now, put more of a demand on the system asking for toilet paper, tissue, that kind of thing. And so, 
as much as people a lot of people have are out of work right now some other people are working overtime to supply what people are asking for sanitizer aloe vera gel alcohol dental paper toilet paper tissue paper all kind of stuff so just don't i th I'm, I'm suggesting to not open up gateways for sickness here do not continue to bombard yourself with what's media sharing i think it's important to kind of tap in because so you know what the norm is because you don't want to just you don't want to disturb people around you trying to do what's right because there are people out there that are really following what they're being told to do it doesn't hurt to be separate right now and seek our heavenly father it doesn't hurt to clean your hands you should be doing that anyway but the way that they're bombarding people with this idea that they they need to do the right thing and people around them are not is causing fear and I tell you, being sick has nothing to do with the cold. It has everything to do with the state, the alkalinity, and the acidity of our bodies and allowing, making it a perfect uh, environment to house sickness. Okay, I've proven this. I lived a lot of years in a situation where it should have killed me. And our Heavenly Father protected me. He showed me what sickness really is and that it's more spiritual than anything else. And that if we eat healthy and we live healthy and we fear not, that he'll be with us okay so this is a little touch on a little few things that were kind of like i should have did videos on in the past already and i didn't anyway i'm kind of in a situation right now it's kind of hard to kind of do my thing because i would pick the pick up my camera and do a video and to save it but because people are kind of like kind of enamored with what i do and the dynamics of the situation it's been hard to do my thing um the way that I used to so I'm, I'm back on track I will be posting again uh, tomorrow hopefully based on what you share with me what you want to hear what you want to know um, do if you, while we still have internet do check out your emergency preparedness website and see what they've been saying all along okay so you know what they were suggesting that you should have because um, as much as they're mocking people for running out, this is what it is. This is what I was going to say. They're mocking people for going out and getting toilet paper um, because they're saying that we're going to have it, but we really don't know. We don't We don't know. And ideally, my mom, when we were growing up, she because she had experienced lack growing up, but also experienced periods in our lives where we had stock market crashes where people didn't have a lot. She always has a stash of uh, like essentials so that if anything happens, she can throw together some dumplings. She can boil some rice and beans um, make a quick soup lentils are great so you know keep that in mind I see people running out and getting waffles and chips and stuff like that yo please think long term I'm gonna be honest I really don't anticipate the, the supply chain to be to being able to keep up with the demands not only that um, they they want you to be dependent on the system. So if anything, they keep talking about shelters and making more beds. And I'm concerned about that. I'm really, truly concerned because if, and also too, they're also talking about not using cash. Um, I went to a store this morning hoping to look for some hand soap. And this is a dollar store that the highest price of anything there is $4. They have name brand things. So what they usually probably do is buy things in bulk and then sell it until it's gone um, so you can get some things that are worth 20 bucks for like four bucks at this particular store that being said I walked in there today they have these new machines I mean they have I don't know if they've, these things were all on deck how everything's evolved so fast but they have these beautiful machines that you can you basically your self checkout it takes credit but it also takes cash and coins I was like what? I mean it was so efficient I don't even know if they're gonna need be needs for cashiers anymore but that's being said, there's a very fast direction pushed towards cashless society. So be very weary. I'm dabbling about like, you know, how much money you should have some money in, the, in your account. So if they say no cash, you can actually swipe. But you should also have um, cash, but also have your supplies because you might have to barter. If they decide they're going to, like cash is, they, no one wants to touch your cash, you may have to barter. Because okay? I don't know if every, every, every uh, business will have these machines where you just put the money in yourself. You know what I mean? It's a lot. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. Hang in there. I love to hear what your thoughts are in the comment section um, because I'd like to know what the direction I, sh I should be going with what I'm sharing because besides what the Heavenly Father is sharing me, I'm sure you have a lot of questions and things that you're concerned about, all right? All right, so get back to me and to discuss amongst yourselves. I hope you're all staying calm, fearless, or happily. Father, heaven given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 
trust him. Psalm 71 seems to be the psalm of the of the cent of the decade so far, 2020. I suggest that you memorize it. I've memorized it, um, and I've used it in warfare, and it's effective. The word of God is God, but Psalm 71 is certainly a most powerful prayer. Okay, so if you can, maybe that'll be a game you play with your kids, learning how to find a fun way to memorize Psalm 91. Um, it's effective. It really is. All right. Woo! Okay, until next time. Remember, you're made marvelously. Say, I love your Heavenly Father loves you so much more. You're a special generation, specifically made and created for this time. So if you're not, you're, you're going to make it. You're good. You're good. All right. Be blessed. I love you.